it's probably important for you to be an active participant in the dynamic process of how your children are going to find and choose their future mate. What's up, guys? Welcome back to 5-Minute Fatherhood. I got a question for you guys. Should we be arranging our kids' marriages? I don't know if you have wrestled with this. Kelsey's laughing at me right now. She didn't know we were going to talk about this. What do you think, Kels? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up, yeah? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so this is a bizarre conversation, uh, and we're just going to like tease this out a little bit. This is actually, I want to talk about our verse of the week. We like to, every week we try to talk through a passage of Scripture, and I want to talk about Genesis 24. But first, um, we need to talk about this, this question. So this is a... This is a, this is interesting. There's a I don't know if you guys have seen uh, the culture wrestle with this question lately, but there there's they, they keep on publishing these bizarre studies and they they, they keep uh, coming up with this result, which is that love or free choice marriages, um, uh, when they study them versus arranged marriages, they keep finding that they are very similar in terms of satisfaction. And of course, it blows Western people away. Like that can't possibly be true. Yeah. Um, because this is this is a uh, this you know to us and to our ear is just total absurdity. Like the worst kind of thing you can imagine is to have somebody arrange a marriage for you. Um, <laughs> but th- the reason why these studies keep coming back um, partially it's because um, Indian culture um, uh, is really uh, becoming more and more a part of. American culture um, and other Western countries. And in Indian culture, there's a very strong, I'm talking about from India, um, a very strong culture of arranged marriages. And, uh, yeah. and, so, and so this conversation keeps, keeps coming up and people keep studying uh, children from uh, immigrant families from India that are in the West and, and how their marriages are uh, compared to an Indian family or Indian kids that are, um, are, are doing sort of the free choice, more Western version of, of, of marriage. And they keep finding these results that are very similar. Uh, and, and that's been really counterintuitive for Western people. Um, so uh, in terms of like how to think about this, this question, you know, there's. I'm not going to say that it's a good idea to arrange marriages, guys. I'm not there yet. But um, <laughs> I, I love Genesis 24, and I, I meditate and think about this chapter a lot when it comes to this topic. Um, we love talking about Abraham on this podcast and him as a model father. And we have the longest description in the Bible of a time when a father had to wrestle with this question. And it's a very long chapter, and it's a beautiful story, and there's so many almost seemingly contradictory dynamics in it. And I encourage you guys just to spend time like really wrestling with what Abraham did when he decided, hey, Isaac's getting too old. I mean, Isaac was like in his 40s, I think. He's like, this guy needs a wife. Um, and so it's interesting that Abraham saw it as his responsibility to, to be a part of that, of that process of solving that problem. Um, and making sure that his son had a wife. He acted in incredible trust towards God. He thought a lot about what things he would compromise and what's, what's, what things he would not compromise. And this story is one of the most interesting stories in the Bible when it comes to balancing human choice and proactive strategy. And Abraham had all kinds of strategies that he employed in this chapter. He used one of his servants. He, uh, he decided where he would be looking. He decided at what point he would stop looking. And at the same time, with all of this human strategy, there was all of this trust. Like he was constantly mm. trusting God. His servant, who went and looked for looked for a spouse for Isaac, um, demonstrated constant trust that God was leading him and guiding him every step of the way. And so, as opposed to just sort of answering this question, what I would say to you guys is that as your kids are getting older, and as you think about um, how you should interact with them with regards to their future spouse. Um, understand that it's probably important for you to be an active participant in the dynamic process of how your children are going to find and choose their future mate. Mm-hmm. How that dynamic plays out is uh, anyone's guess. None of my kids are married. We have conversations about this a lot. I care a lot about this. Um, they have a lot of freedom, but they're also very much like talking to me in April, and we're, we're thinking about this and praying about this and interacting about this a lot as a family team. And where does this actually fall out culturally? I'm not super excited about the way our culture does it, which is don't e- even get involved almost at all in your kid's decision in this area. Um, I'm not super excited about the way that uh, Eastern cultures oftentimes do this, where there's arranged marriages. But I do 
I am really inspired by by Genesis 24 uh, and by Abraham's sort of thoughtfulness, his trust, and his strategic action in this area, and just trying to like wrestle and think through that. But yeah, Jeff, anything that stirs up for you as you think about this topic? Yeah, there's not much more I would add, but I I, I think two things. I think one, like this is actually true, and this has been backed up by non-Christian sources. And like you said, it's kind of them almost being, uh, what's the word, like surprised at the findings and everyone can multiple right. over and over again about satisfaction. And I would say f- the first thing I would say is let that indict us for what it is. Like that is that should that completely is an indictment on our view of love and freedom and romance and uh, pursuit of what's going to make us happy. Like let that indict us for what it is because it is a huge indictment that that like that it's it, that, that our ideal or our view is just like it's not what it's cracked up to be. It doesn't actually deliver on what it promises. The Nicholas Sparks and the Notebook and all these different things. It doesn't deliver, and that's clear because of the 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 mm. the, the ways where none of that exists. But yet the satisfaction is still the same. And so uh, I would say that. And then two, I think yeah, I, I think like you said, there's like I, I don't I don't really, I think there's actually problems with both. But what I do like about the more arranged side. Well, another thing I would say too is do we. Also also realize too. I think we. I do. I do think sometimes we think that it's only in the east or that it's more archaic. In reality, like this was an American thing too. Before, like like dating as a as a new invention that goes back to maybe like I don't know 1910 ish. It was like the turn of the century. Like it was a we. It was weird for a guy to show up, take a daughter, you know, have her hop in the car, and then leave in isolation. Like that was a. That's a, that's like the modern form of dating. And that's new and that's weird and like that's not what it was like before. And because there was not a ton of like then contact or hanging out, there was a lot more of like parents helping and assisting um, alongside the path. And that's more what I think it is. I, I don't. I, I think sometimes the word arranged marriage has a lot of baggage, but there's a softer version of it that a lot of times, as what you said, is just parents actually coming alongside and helping and assisting yeah. and being more involved. And that I think is something to think about and consider that does very much go against our culture's ideal, but clearly our idea, our ideal isn't working very well. So something to think about for sure. And like me and Jeremy are saying, we're not saying there's one right or wrong, but I think it gives you some food for thought for sure. 